In this final lecture on alkenes, we're going to look in more detail at the reactions and we're going to consider the reaction mechanisms. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to use curly arrows to give the mechanism for the addition of hydrogen halides to alkenes, including the intermediate states. You should be able to explain Makovnikov's rule in terms of carbocation stability. Use curly arrows to give the mechanism for the addition of water to alkenes, including the intermediate states. And use curly arrows to give the mechanism for the addition of halogens to alkenes, once again including the intermediate states. So in this lecture we want to take a closer look at the reaction mechanisms involved in the addition reactions of the alkenes. So in the previous lecture we came across the four main addition reactions of alkenes. Addition of hydrogen, it's hydrogenation. Addition of halogens, halogenation. Addition of hydrogen halides and the addition of water. Now we're only going to look at the reaction mechanisms for three out of those four. We're not going to look at the reaction mechanism for the addition of hydrogen. So we're going to look at the hydrogen halide, water and halogens in that order. So let's look at looking at the mechanism for the addition of hydrogen halides to alkenes. And the first thing I want you to remember is that this proceeds via a carbocation intermediate. Remember, a carbocation is a positively charged carbon atom, and we'll see this in due course. So, let's look at a simple alkene, and uh, what happens when we add a hydrogen halide like HBr? Right, what we're going to get is electrophilic addition. This carbon-carbon double bond is very electron rich and will get attacked by electrophiles. The electrophile in this case is the hydrogen end of the HBr molecule because the HBr molecule is very polar the bromine is far more electronegative than the hydrogen, so the hydrogen is slightly positive and the bromine is slightly negative. So the H end of the HBr molecule is an electrophile and will attack the CC double bond. So the two electrons forming one of these carbon-carbon double bonds move to form a bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. And the two electrons that were on the HBr covalent bond go onto the more electronegative element, the bromine. So, product of that now the hydrogen can form a bond with either that carbon or that carbon. Uh, which one? Uh, it would depend on Makovnikov, which we'll look into in a few moments. But since this is a totally symmetric alkene, it doesn't matter what one I choose. So just to make it clear, I'll put it onto that hydrogen. I'll just put the, that one in a slightly different colour. Right. This carbon, however, has now got positive charge because the electron it had donated to that carbon-carbon double bond has been lost and has moved over here. And we also have a Br minus. Okay. So this is our carbocation intermediate and the bromide ion then attacks this carbocation to form our product. A bromine added there, a hydrogen added there. So that's a basic, basic mechanism for the addition of hydrogen halides to alkenes. So proceeds via this carbocation intermediate, which is C+. Okay, 
Now this is a nice simple example where the carbon, the alkene was symmetric. Let's look at the example where the uh, alkene is not symmetric. So let's look at propene, where we've got a non-symmetric alkene and electrophilic attack by HBr again. So CC double bond breaks forming a bond between the carbon and the hydrogen and the HBr bond breaks producing a Br- ion. But what hydrogen does that form a, what carbon does this hydrogen form a bond with, that one or that one? Well, hopefully from the previous lecture you remember in fact it can do either. Okay, so we've got our So let's say, in this case, the hydrogen goes on to the form the bond in that hydrogen and that carbon. Okay. And we've got the positive charge on that carbon. And let's look at the other instance. where the hydrogen has gone on to the right hand carbon and the positive charge is on that carbon. Okay. Now in each case the next step of the process is the carbocation is attached, attacked by the bromine, bromide ion forming our product, in this case we'll have a Br on the right hand carbon and the hydrogen we attack, ta uh, attached on the middle carbon. Well, in this case the bromine Ooh. attaches to the middle carbon. Right, so one of them is the major product, one's the minor product. Uh, from a Kovnikov rule, we should know that the major product is one in which the hydrogen is attached to the carbon that already had a greater number of hydrogens attached to it. So this is our major product down here. Now can we explain that in more detail? Well we can. It's a major product because the carbocation intermediate is more stable. Why is the carbocation intermediate more stable? Well the first thing to remember is perhaps these, er these arrows here are slightly misleading. It's really more an equilibrium at this stage. So the carbocation intermediate is very unstable and if it's not quickly attacked by a bromide ion it will quickly break back down to give you an alkene. However, this carbocation is slightly more stable than this one, so it'll hang around longer. So it'll be present for longer to be attacked by a bromide ion, and so this is a major product. So the question is, what makes this carbocation more stable than this one? Okay. Well, what increases the stability of a carbocation is the number of alkyl groups it's attached to. If you look at this one, the C plus the carbocation is attached to a methyl group there and a methyl group there. So it's attached to two different alkyl groups. And these alkyl groups can feed in electrons to partially get rid of or hide this positive charge. Okay, not entirely but slightly. So it's attached to two alkyl groups which help to stabilise the carbocation. Now 
This carbocation up here is only attached to one alkyl group. It's an ethyl group. It's bigger than the methyl groups, but the size of the alkyl group isn't really important. This is partially stabilized by one alkyl group. This is partially stabilized by two alkyl groups. So that stabilizes it to a greater extent. So this carbocation is more stable, hence this is the major product. So hopefully you can now look at that and explain why Makovnikov's rule works. So it's important you know what Makovnikov's rule is and you can explain how it works in terms of the stability of the carbocations. Okay, let's move on now to the acid catalyzed addition of water, which really is very, very similar to the mechanism for the addition of hydrogen halides. And it proceeds via a carbocation intermediate, just like the hydrogen halides. So Now it says that the reaction is acid catalyzed and you need H plus ions to kick off the reaction. Okay. So the C double bond C bond breaks and a bond is formed between the carbon, either the carbons in this case, and the H plus ion. Okay. So we then form our carbocation intermediate. And in the previous example, the hydrogen halides, that was then attacked by the halide ion. In this case, the carbocation intermediate is attacked by a water molecule. Now, the oxygen in the water molecule has got lone pairs and so they can be donated to form a covalent bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So try and focus on the similarities between the water and the uh, hydrogen halide. But now there's a positive charge on that uh, oxygen because it's lost an electron. So the final stage in the process is that the OH bond breaks, those electrons go back onto the oxygen, producing our major product, which is our alcohol, with a hydrogen attached to one carbon and OH attached to the other carbon. And this this breakdown here uh, replaces the H plus ion that was used up at the start of the reaction, showing that the H plus ion is just a catalyst. So basically, same idea really as the hydrogen halides. Uh, double bond attacks the electrophile, H plus in this case, the H of the hydrogen halide in the other case. The carbocation is then attacked by the halide, or in this case, the lone pair on the oxygen. And for the water, it's just this extra final step where the OH bond breaks uh, to reconstitute the H plus ions. Very similar reaction to the hydrogen halide. This is done for a symmetrical alkene. If we did it for an asymmetrical alkene, we'd get the exact same thing as we did for the hydrogen halide with the more stable car carbocation. Uh, leading to the major product. So our third and final mechanism is for the addition of halogens. And this is a wee bit different from the other two mechanisms. So the intermediate in this case is not a carbo carbocation but a cyclic ion. Okay, so it's still an ion but it's a cyclic ion, it's not a carbocation. So let's have a look at this mechanism. Again, we'll just stick with a nice simple ethene. And let's attack it with bromine. 
Now, one normally wouldn't consider bromine to be an electrophile because it's a non-polar molecule. But if the bromine molecule is in close vicinity to the electron-rich carbon-carbon double bond, then the electrons here uh, repel the electrons in the bromine bromine covalent bond, pushing them further away from this area. So pushing them in towards this bromine atom. So we get what's called an induced polar, an induced dipole. in the bromine molecule, that end positive and that end negative. So normally in isolation a bromine molecule would not have a dipole, it would be totally pure covalent, but when adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond you get this induced dipole. Right, what happens then is the carbon-carbon double bond breaks and you get a bond formed between the carbon and this bromine. The BRBR bond then breaks and the electrons go into this to make a bromide ion. But then some of the non-bonding lone pair electrons in the bromine form a bond with the other carbon atom. So the result of all that is this cyclic ion with a ch Br plus charge uh, on it and you have a Br minus ion as well. So this is your cyclic ion intermediate and then the bromide ion then attacks that carbon and that CBR bond breaks and uh, the electrons go into that bromine producing our product with a halogen on each carbon atom. Okay, so a very different mechanism from the other two. So Try to remember the similarities between the halide, the hydrogen halide and the water, both going via the carbocation intermediate, which can then be used to explain Markovnikov, and then the halogen, which goes via the cyclic ion intermediate. Now, historically, people find these uh, reaction mechanisms quite difficult to remember. Uh, there's actually only going to be five in total throughout the whole of the course. You've just been shown three of them. There's two more in the next section on the halo alkanes, and then that's all the reaction mechanisms you need to know. So by now you should be able to use curly arrows to give the mechanism for the addition of hydrogen halides to alkenes, including the intermediate states. You should be able to explain Markovnikov's rule in terms of carbocation stability. Use curly arrows to give the mechanism for the addition of water to alkenes, again including intermediate states. And finally, you should also be able to use curly arrows to give the mechanism for the addition of halogens to alkenes, including once again intermediate states.